humanity? Absolutely. The U.S. has three authorized vaccines to fight the spread of coronavirus and prevent severe infections. The latest, authorized in late February, is Johnson & Johnson's vaccine. Saturday's event was specifically our first event with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And I believe we did about 1,600 doses. You know, we get patients in, we verify all their information, get them the shot, watch and make sure they do okay, and then get them out. We can really get to the community here. Unlike Pfizer and Moderna's mRNA vaccine, which used new technology, Johnson & Johnson's was developed in a way similar to the one for the flu. The Janssen COVID-19 vaccine approach is to take a common, cold, harmless, non-replication competent virus called Adeno-26, in which the DNA of the SARS spike insert was given into the genome. That ultimately results in a spike protein in the right conformation that gives the body the opportunity to feel that this is the actual virus that it's seeing when it's not, it's the protein. This latest vaccine has two big advantages. It doesn't need to be stored at sub-zero temperatures, and it's a single shot, so no follow-up is necessary. We always say, what vaccine is better than the other vaccine? In order to be able to determine that, you would have to compare them head to head. This was not done. The 66% vaccine efficacy that we have is really against all of the countries involved. 72% is the vaccine efficacy against moderate to severe critical infection in the United States. 72% in the U.S. is still really good. We don't know what Pfizer and Moderna would, would have shown if they had been studied at the same time. But the vaccine has also prompted questions about which one works best. Moderna and Pfizer are the best. And I am going to do everything I can to make sure the residents of the city of Detroit get the best. Mayor Duggan has since clarified his comments, but it reinforces a perception of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine that health workers will have to keep explaining that it's less effective. So when I think about the vaccine, there are different buckets that I put their effectiveness into. And so there's the, you know, will I get COVID at all or will I have this asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic form that I could still transmit? Am I going to get really sick from COVID? Am I going to get put in the hospital and am I going to die from COVID, right? And so when you look at that category, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine still did very, very well. And so if we're really looking at, like, we're just trying to help people not get really sick, not get admitted, and not die from COVID-19, it's a great vaccine still. Plus, having this third shot means more people can get a vaccine. Having these different types of vaccines available for use, you know, ones that have different storage requirements, different handling requirements, different dosing recommendations, that will bring more options and more flexibility to healthcare providers. You know, it could absolutely allow for expanded availability of vaccine. All right, go all the way to the front, please. There will always be people that have personal reasons that they want one versus the other. Do I want to deal with the two shots versus one? Am I comfortable with the mRNA versus the adenovirus? Yeah, when there's plenty of supply, people can be a little more particular if they want. I don't personally, like, I will take, they're all good. I'll take whichever one you give me.